The Welsh Government is to redefine the word woman to include transgender females under planned new laws. So the proposal was revealed yesterday in a leaked draft of its Gender Quotas Bill, which proposes that half the candidates in any list to be members of the Senate, that's the Welsh Parliament or Welsh Assembly, must be women. Hmm. So joining us now is the founder of Standing for Women, Kelly J. Keane. Kelly, thank you for joining us on the show this morning. So they want to change the definition of woman to include... Uh, the definition will state that transgender, so this is what's included in, in women, a person who is proposing to undergo, is undergoing or has undergone a process or part of the process for the purpose of reassigning their sex to female. Oh, gosh, if I could make sense of any single one of those words, I'd be <laughs> some sort of genius. Um, I mean, you, you and The Telegraph and various people have talked about transgender females this morning, and I... I don't know quite what that is either. Um, as far as I'm concerned, when it comes to female, there is one female that's uh, someone like myself uh, who was born female and has XX chromosomes. Um, and then there are people who are men who are not born with XX chromosomes who uh, some of them claim to be women. Um, and so that's what we're talking about. And look, we could get in a, a situation in Wales where they have this wonderful... 50-50 gender, again, uh, some sort of bizarre term which no, nobody can define, uh, where everybody could have a penis, but they could still claim to be 50-50 men and women. So it's, it's bonkers. They're effectively trying to create a new definition of a woman, aren't they? Yeah, effectively. Yeah, I think that, you know, the Welsh government have been on this, this journey into uh, nonsensical definitions for quite some time. I, you know, I just read a seven page document this morning about what non-binary is. So, uh, you know, all bets are off when it comes to just how crazy they might go. Um, I think they're probably gonna try and compete with Scotland, which, you know, is, is gonna be fun to watch. Although not that fun if you're a woman or a, a young person living in Wales. I mean, Kelly J. Keen, I guess the counter is the question, would you prefer transgender women were excluded from candidates lists if they can't if they don't see themselves as a male they see themselves as a woman and if they're not allowed on the women's lists then they can't become a politician well you know them's the breaks uh if you want to pretend that you're something that you're not then you can't be included in Either list, I guess. That's a choice that you make. Um, as far as I know, there are sort of women-only lists. I don't even agree with such a thing. I think we should live in a meritocracy. But if there are to be women-only lists, I've never heard of a male man-only list. So there are open lists and there are women-only lists. And if you're a man who has decided that you're not really a man after all, then you can join the list for everybody. You just can't. You can be anything you want in this country. You just can't be the opposite sex because it's impossible. So if a man transitions fully, uh, Kelly J, to what he regards now as female status, what would you describe that person as? Would you still say they're still a man? Well, the same as you did in your question, and I would, yeah, I would still call them a man. They, they, there's no such thing as transitioning into female status or into a female body or into a woman. Um, you know, those things might be on yeah. somebody's wish list, and I, I wish them well. I hope they find some sort of peace, uh, but I don't think they will find a woman's body at the end of whatever transition they may seek. Now, the, Kathy Larkman, she's quoted in the reports about this. She's the Welsh coordinator of the Women's Rights Network. She says this change would likely see men self-identifying as women to greatly improve their chances of selection and would muscle females out. Well, look, I, you know, those are, that's getting into the weeds, really. Basically, mm. men can't be women. And so uh, it doesn't really matter whether some man believes he's doing it just to cheat uh, and get in, a, in a, an election on a shortlist or whether he has, you know, some real desire to be a woman. Either way, he's not a woman. So we either have women only shortlists. Or we don't. And if we do, they have to mean something. There must be some reason why people have decided it's important that women are represented uh, in Welsh government. And the only way women can be represented is with these quotas. And if that is true, and I'm not saying it is, but if that's your rationale for doing something, 
then a man who claims to be a woman doesn't have any of those needs that he won't tick any boxes. He doesn't know what it's like to be a teenage girl. He doesn't know what it's like uh, for, uh, you know, to live a single day as a woman. So it would just, it, it just doesn't make any sense. If you want representation, why on earth would you pick somebody who can't possibly know what it's like to, <laughs> to be representative of the population they claim? Well, of course, Mark Drakeford has, uh, he's argued for a long time, First hasn't Minister. he, that transgender women are yeah. women. Yeah, he's standing down, I think, quite soon. Not soon enough. <laughs> I'm, uh, I'm not saying? comfortable with the idea of women's shortlists anyway, really. No. And the idea of quotas, and then to have oh, this, this whole debate. Thank you very much for joining us. Kelly J. Keane, the founder of Standing for Women, thank you for your time. And a voice of common sense. <laughs> yes, in this mad world. In this mad world. And I do not understand why we don't get more people in the government taking on this madness. Because they should. They did it in Scotland over the gender reform bill there. Uh, they challenged it. Uh, they should be challenging what's happening in Wales because that, it will not be popular. That was a real eye-opener, wasn't it, what happened in Scotland? Yeah. So, I, th I think it hastened the departure of Nicola Sturgeon. Absolutely. As First Minister. Absolutely. She was so completely out of touch on that issue. She would deny that, of She course. would. She just needed a break. Yeah, she can come on and talk about it if she'd like to. <laughs> she doesn't like me at all. Fine. That doesn't surprise no. me, Andrew.